This new paper finds that structured generation actually affects in a negative way the performance of LLMs on reasoning tasks. It does benefit classification tasks. In this video, we're going to go through some of the findings from this excellent work from a group of researchers from Appear AI Research and National Taiwan University on structure generation. They basically investigate the impact of structure generation and different format schemes and how that affects the performance of the language model on a variety of tasks, from reasoning tasks to classification tasks. So let's get right into it. It's important to understand what a standard prompt is. So a standard prompt will look something like this here on the right-hand side. You have a question, right? So this is your question here. And then you have the standard prompting. So let's say you wanted to give the model the simple task and you wanted it to break down the task step by step and then to give you the final answer, right? So we are prompting the model explicitly to give us a step by step reasoning. In the standard prompting sense, what you can do is give the instruction and then give the model this format and then the model goes through the different steps and then it finally gives you an answer. And that usually leads to good answers, especially if those models are trained a lot on performing good at reasoning tasks. On the other hand, what has been explored more recently and we're seeing it that LLM providers are adopting these strategies more and more. So the latest example of this is the structured outputs features that were released by OpenAI recently. The idea here is that we want to format the output. And usually that restriction is based on some format. So just to show you as an example here, we have the same example above. And instead of prompting it openly like this, we can prompt it like this. So provide your output in the following valid JSON format. So it's the same problem, same question and so on, but we wanted it to give us in a specific valid format. And we give it an example of that format and we actually tell it like the keys that we want and where the values go. So this is a very common way of applying this format restriction on your prompts. And what they are claiming here is that that generally leads to a degradation in performance. So let's go through the details here of this paper. I'm not gonna go through everything in the paper. I'm just gonna highlight the key findings and also some discussions that I mentioned here, and also some other findings and ways on how you might mitigate some of these issues that appear with structured generation. Again, with the structured generation, there are different strategies. So for instance, those that have been popularized recently are constrained decoding. If you look at the structured output features that were recently released by OpenAI, you would find that they are using this idea of constrained decoding. This is very similar to like JSON mode. In fact, I think they are suggesting that you use this constrained decoding or this structured outputs to improve the reliability and reduce the hallucination with these models. But the question here is, does it actually benefit all kinds of diverse tasks or is it just on some use cases? So that's what this paper explores and we're gonna go through the results in a bit. So this is the constrained decoding. This one basically is about trying to constrain the tokens that are used, right? So enforcing predefined token space during the generation process. And this apparently leads to Again, this structured outputs that eliminate common issues that may appear with LLMs that lead to, again, poor results or hallucination and those sort of problems that are common with LLMs. And then there's another version, which is format restriction instructions. So FRI. So this one is more directly prompting the LLM to generate responses in some standardized format. So you would have it like in a JSON, XML, or YAML. And there's a lot of debate, by the way, on what is the format that we should be using. And usually this would adhere to some specified schema. So you provide the schema. So an example of that would be what we saw here in the first page. Then the other one is the NL2 format. So it's a bit like this. So these two are very similar. The difference with the NL2 format, which is natural language to format, is that there are two-step process. So this is the idea of kind of chaining these prompts. So the first one is just instructing the LLM to answer the question in natural language, and then instruct it to convert its response into the target format schema that you may have. So the schema, as I showed you before, the JSON example above. So it disentangles basically the two processes, and that usually leads to better performance. So as I mentioned here, you can think of it as a more relaxed version of structured generation, right? And the goal is to maintain the performance of unrestricted natural language responses. So you want to separate that out while still providing structured outputs, which helps with getting reliable responses from these LLMs. 
So hopefully that was a good overview of the structured generation space. It's a really important concept for developers. So if you are working with LLMs, I think it's important to familiarize with that. So that's the first tip I will give you here. So we're going to jump into the experiments and results right away. So what they have here is this result on comparing reasoning related tasks such as the GSM8K. So GSM8K is a math word problem solving task or benchmark. And then they have other reasoning tasks as well, such as last letter, taking the last letter of words and putting them together and then shuffle objects as well. How do the different LLMs perform when using these sort of constraints or structured generation techniques? And in particular, right, how does it perform on these tasks using things like JSON mode, the FRI that we discussed, and L to format and NL. I think these ones are focused more on JSON, but we are going to also look at the results on different formats like XML and YAML as well. So you can see here the results. So when using JSON mode, you can see how it hurts the performance compared to just using something like NL to format or natural language. You can see how it hurts the performance on this particular task. This is an important benchmark that the community really relies on to track how good these models are getting at reasoning tasks. And even for the other tasks as well, you can see how it deteriorates in performance when using something like JSON mode. So you can try JSON mode, for instance, with the GPT models. And that's something, an experiment that you can easily try on your particular task. So that's the overall trend. Now, there are specific results that they are highlighting here. And that's what I'm going to go through in the next couple of minutes. I think another interesting set of results is this particular figure. And what they're doing here is they're testing on different classification related tasks. So we have a couple of them here and they're trying things like JSON mode, similarly to what we saw with the reasoning tasks on that first figure, same ones, right? Like NL to format and just free natural language. And you can see the performance here. Now, it's really interesting that for this particular benchmark right here, that JSON mode, specifically when using Gemini 1.5 Flash, has really good performance on this particular one. And what you're seeing is that there's generally good performance when using some of those format restrictions. So regardless of the benchmark, we are seeing that these modes, JSON mode and so on, they perform generally well on classification tasks. So what this is saying is that these structured generation techniques are actually useful for classification tasks. Just to stick with the classification tasks, you can see how they perform when applying different formats. So here we have XML, YAML, and JSON, and then we have the natural language as well. Again, we see a lot of performance boost when using these type of formats. You can see here across, but there's not a lot of difference in terms of how it impacts the results with the different models. There's nothing really that stands out here uh, with the exception of this particular data set. I think we'll need to take a closer look at this specific one. I think there are some interesting things that can emerge from this particular data set, which I believe is some kind of medical type of data sets from what they mentioned here. So yeah, there is multiple choice medical diagnosis data set. There are a couple of other interesting main results that they are reporting. So for instance, the impact of format restriction on the final result. I already gave you the summary of the structure generation and how it impacts on reasoning tasks and how it impacts results on the classification tasks. So we went through that already. But something that they mentioned here, for instance, this one I think was interesting. So it says, upon inspection, we found that 100% of GPT 3.5 Turbo JSON mode responses placed the answer key before the reasoning key, resulting in zero-shot direct answering instead of zero-shot chain of thought reasoning. So it flipped the processes. And so I think this could impact the results of the model. So if you are doing this, pay very close attention to the order of that because that might be influencing the overall performance of your system. You can see here that they emphasize this, right? The order of keys in structured outputs and the decoupling of reasoning from format adherence emerge as important factors in maintaining LLM capabilities while providing structured responses. So essentially, if you are leveraging structured, this particular paper is not advocating for people not to use it, but they're advocating for you to pay very close attention at certain things that might emerge, right? some biases that might emerge from using the structured generation that will impact your overall performance and things that you might overlook. And so 
I think structured generation is really good because of improvement on the reliability part. But what I'm getting from this is that it might constrain certain type of outputs that is needed for the model to give you the reliable response. They find that structured generation, especially with these different formats, are constraining the model. So why is it the case then that structured generation helps classification, but doesn't help reasoning tasks as much? In fact, it hurts the performance of the language model on reasoning tasks. So they mentioned something here, which is they hypothesized that JSON mode improves classification task performance by constraining possible answers, results resulted in reducing errors in answer selection. Conversely, natural language responses may introduce distractions leading to parsing errors. These findings suggest that format restrictions impact on LLM performance could be task dependent. Something that they also did, which was interesting, I think, as a, an experiment, is that they try to make the schema restriction a bit softer. So what I mean by that is instead of giving the model the following response, which is reply your answer in JSON format with the following schema and then giving it the key and the values that you expect, the, the actual schema, we simply instruct the LLM to output in the target format language. So you would say, reply your answer in JSON format. I mean, if you have been working with LLMs as a developer, the reply your answer in JSON format was how we initially started to experiment with these models. People found out that you can also give it some sort of schema because these models were being trained on lots of data like that. So we could utilize the model because the model will understand that specific instruction and would understand that it needs to follow that specific schema. Again, what we're seeing here is that this is not necessarily bad, but pay very close attention, especially when you're doing some type of reasoning or planning or those type of tasks, because it will limit how the model can express itself and the type of outputs that it can produce. So the results of this particular experiment, we can see it in table one. So let's go to table one. Keep in mind, we want to tell the model to output in specific format, but we're not specifying the schema. And you can see when we do place a schema constraint on the model, how the different models perform. So if we're just using text, for instance, that's totally fine. We see that the performance is really good when we do it that way. But when we place a constraint on schema, you can see how the performance goes down. These are just standard deviation. So you, you can see it hurts the performance overall. Don't get that benefit that you may think you may get by providing the model that example of a schema. And this kind of goes against this philosophy of providing the model demonstrations, because I think schema does give the model some example of the type of outputs that you want, like a demonstration of maybe a JSON object that you want. In fact, what I think might be useful, and this is something that we are experimenting with as well is paying closer attention to how you're providing that schema. I think that's really important here. You may have to be super careful, not about the structure specifically, but about where you place it, where you place that schema, the key values that you're using. Do you want to give it examples of key values as well? Maybe that will help, right? Like in the few shot prompting scenario. And yeah, just paying very close attention to the naming of those keys that you're providing as schema. So all of that I think should be taken into consideration because what we have found out is that when we provide the model better structured inputs and very detailed structured inputs, we're getting better results. So similarly to how structured outputs might give you good results, structured inputs also helps the model in understanding better the task, if that makes sense. They also mentioned this, which is a parsing error rate. So you may think because we need to constrain and structure the output that the model might generate some kind of syntax error or something like that might be present with those outputs. In fact, what they found out is that most of these models don't actually suffer from parsing errors. And that schema that you're placing, it's restricting how it can reason and the generation process itself. This is what they mentioned here in this particular section. Take a look at this paper. There's related work. There are a couple of more results that I want to get into here. But I thought this was an interesting one. You can see here on the reasoning task also the performance when using the different uh, formats. So JSON, YAML, and XML. So there's a lot of, again, debate about what is the right format to use as well. Uh, this wasn't the 
purpose of this paper, but that's, I think, another direction as well that will be worth exploring because some people are finding that YAML works great, especially for Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model, and JSON works well with the GPT-3 models. And I've seen also people using XML as well. I think XML works great with the cloud model, but how does that impact the results, right? Does it impact the overall performance of these models on the specific tasks that we want, especially the reasoning tasks? That's a question I think that most developers now will need to pay close attention. I think there's a lot of little insights and nuggets here. There are a couple of ways how you might mitigate some of these issues. So for instance, they mentioned something about mitigating parsing errors if those were ever present. And the way you can do that is by using some kind of corrective prompt, a corrective process using something like cloud. Anyways, I'll keep the video at that. Otherwise, it'll get too long. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you all on the next one.